right hello welcome back so what we're going to do we're going to talk about nd filters and the 180 degree rule with the mini 4 pro just recently done one with the avata 2 and thought i'd just add this because uh, i've learned an awful lot and i thought well just bring it over to the uh, mini 4 pro and nd filters i found are really important if you want to make your videos nice so let's get into it okay so as you can see i've currently got it in d log m and it's using settings that I've locked into the camera. So I've got white balance of 5,400 and I've got uh, D-Log M in there and I've got ISO 110. So, and this is an F 1.7, which is the camera or F aperture is 1.7. Um, but this is the UV filter. So I'm going to show you the difference between using normal, which I didn't set any settings before whatsoever. And it's a couple of months ago when, before I started using ND filters, as you can see, that uh, the pitch is okay, but it's not brilliant. So this is the UV filter, and um, you can you can use it for this. It's not too bright, but I can I'm going to show you this the difference from UV to original, and then we're going to go over to ND8, 16, and 64, and see what they all look like in comparison. And I'm going to keep it locked in to this, so which is 5,000. 400 white balance and I'm going to do that just before we take off of ND8 to make sure I've got it right and then I'm going to keep it the same for all of them. Let's replace the ND filter on the front of the drone. So I've got this switched off. It's on a separate day because it's too windy today. So uh, take the case off. I know why it's switched off. You must do this really, I won't say must, but it's recommended that you do this while it's switched off because the motors will fight you because it's trying to keep itself level and it's fighting against what to uh, what you're trying to do so you can damage it and ultimately you end up buying a new drone so hold the lens at the top and then just twizzle it so this side away this side towards me as i'm holding this drone and then it comes off it's easy as that simple and now what we're going to do we're going to replace it with these lenses nd filters and they're relatively cheap about 25 pound UK money, about $28 American. Um, and I'm going to put that on. And to do that on, you, you just do the reverse. So I'm just going to hold the top of the lens like so. Put that on at an angle, push it on, and then just twizzle it. And you'll feel it click into place. So that's now in. Uh, just see, try to focus in on my head. You can see that's in now. Uh, and what that does is it re reduces haze, UV filter, and also reduces the uh, the blue colours, if you like, uh, in your video. Now, the filter that comes with it, or should I say the black off filter, it's recommended that you replace this kind of straight away because it's not really a filter, is it? It just tells you on the front what it is, F1.7 just see if that'll zoom in it's not going to zoom in it's going to be trying to zoom in on my head hello <laughs> but but yeah it's not really a filter so i recommend you replace that straight away um i'm going to start going on back to you Chris. okay so i've got the drone up in the air i've got the nd8 and let's jump into the settings and change it manually so we can get that uh, motion blur and set the drone up how we want it with the nd8 so and the drone, as you can see at the moment, I've got it on photo, but if you press on this button here, it will then switch over to video. And then if you press on white balance at the bottom, that brings up your settings. And if you look at the top, currently we've got white balance set to auto. Let's press, take that off. And now it's 5,200K. So pay attention to that because that's what the drone thinks that the white balance is so we want to keep that as close as possible so i'm going to leave that on there and then let's go down to the other settings so i've currently got it at 4k 60 frames a second so remember 60 frames a second uh, we're going to use the 108 degree rule like we said and um, that 60 frames a second is quite important i'll come back to that so let's scroll a bit down a bit more i've got it on 265 for the coding format, it's a better format, better than 264. So um, we're gonna use 265 and, and MPEG-4. So if you look at the bottom, we've got little lines and then you've got a circle on the right hand side. Press on the circle. Now you'll see ISO and shutter speed 
is set to auto. Now, if you look at the uh, aperture triangle, if you like, you know, the 180 degree rule. So you've got aperture at the top, which the camera is a uh, um, 1.7 aperture for the for the lens you can't change that in these you can in the maverick freeze and the, the the more like commercial drones if you like but in these ones you can't change that's why we're using nd filters so what we can change is iso shutter speed and white balance so we've already set white balance so let's take the iso off auto and put it in manual uh, pay attention to the settings already so we've got iso at 100 and then we've got shutter speed at one at three tw 320 now if you remember like i just said a minute ago your frame rate is 60 frames. Now we're gonna double that to 120. So we want one over 120. So we scroll over to 120. And that's it, that's what we're gonna set it at. But you can see how really bright it is. So we're gonna bring that down with the ISO. So it's a bit too bright, uh, but we're gonna keep it at that. And then we're gonna go, I think it's gonna be an ND16 today. This is a separate day from when I filmed at the beginning when you saw the video, it's early in the morning. I wanted to see what the difference is so I can understand it a bit better myself. So the white balance is 5,200. I think that's set a bit high. So uh, we're gonna do ND8, we're gonna leave it at 100 ISO and then 120. And then when we put ND16 on, we're gonna change that as well. So that's now set. Let's send the drone on its way. So I've got uh, a waypoint for this. Okay, so now the settings are in for ND8. Let's see what it looks like looking like it's a bit too bright uh, it is early in the morning that's the reason why I've, I've come out first thing in the morning is i want to see what the difference is from midday to early morning just to see what the comparison is and if you change that white balance too much you can introduce too much blue into the sky or which, whatever scenario you've got so just be mindful of that uh, so the auto set to 5200 so i've kind of set it to that that's what the camera, that's what the settings in the, in the drone thinks it is. So we're gonna stick with that. So we've got all the settings now locked in. You can, as you can see, NDA is a bit too bright. ND16 is kind of, mm, kind of happy with that. 32, way too dark. And then 64, well, you can barely see the house is full stop. So we know it's not 64 with them settings that are locked in. Um, you can use these settings um, put an ND filter on and do this for picture. It's not advisable. I would advise you change the settings rather than put an ND filter on because you can get the correct amount of light into that to get that picture and then change it in post edit. So it's entirely up to yourself. I did take a picture with ND8, I think it was. I'll put the picture there now, but I wouldn't advise it. I'd stick to changing the settings to best suit whatever you're shooting at the time for the picture. And uh, so ND filters ultimately is to ensure that you're not getting too much light into the camera, but also motion blur. So we're gonna move over to motion blur. I'm hoping my little farmer has been really, really busy. I, I can't think on how hard it must be being a farmer, especially with this day and age. But anyway, we're gonna see if he's got some bales out, but if not, we're gonna try and get some motion blur. So uh, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so it's getting a little bit windy. I got the drone up. Uh, I'm gonna try and get some motion blur. I put ND8 on, not ND16, that we had on yesterday. This is day number three. So this is about 20 to seven in the morning, seven o'clock, where yesterday was more like half past eight. So you can hear, hear the drone up at the minute. So let's try and get some motion blur. I'm gonna put it into sport mode. Just be mindful when you do this in sport mode, next to obstacles, there's no obstacle avoidance. So if you're pointing towards a building or a tree, it's gonna keep going towards it. It's not gonna stop. So just be mindful of that when you, when you switch modes, what mode you're in. Okay, so let's try and get some motion blur now. ND8 looks miles better than it did in ND16 using the same settings that we had yesterday. So I'm quite happy with using ND8. It's nice and blue, the sky is, the, the ground's nice and bright. There's no dark colors. So let's give this a shot. Try and get close to the tree so we can get a bit of motion blur.
Okay, so in a nutshell, are ND filters any good for your drone? Yes, makes your video quality better, I believe, when you're editing. Comes out better. Uh, see what you think. Let me know in the comments. Uh, see how you've got on with this. These are pretty cheapish, you know, like 26 quid, I think I said at the beginning of the video. And they've, they're actually pretty good uh, ND filters that I, I've been using compared to the ones that I've been using on the Vata 2 and also the Baby Orc. Uh, I've got ND filters for that as well. So if you really want to see some good motion blur, go and watch them videos um, on the ND filters that motion blur comes out wicked on FPV but that's another video for another time but uh, I hope I did okay for this video let me know in the comments uh, if you want me to revisit this really enjoyed it so uh, I'll see you again and uh, see you next time